Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 107. Please turn to it. Page number 107. Today is our lesson number 53. On page 107 we see practice problems. Problem number one is what we are about to do. These questions are what are known as linear equations. And if you are not very good at solving linear equations, and if you need some more help besides the two or three problems that you see in the book here, if you feel that you need a little bit more help, a little bit more practice, on my channel you will find 15 more videos dealing with exactly this concept, linear equations here. This is the course schedule for algebra, the, uh, algebra video that you will find on the, on the channel. There are 200 videos. Day 1 through 100 we deal with the elementary concept of algebra. And then day 101 through 200 we learn how to solve simple word problems. It, day 86 through 100 is where you find linear, uh, linear equations. Let's see what we have here. The first one says, 3 times 4y minus 1, we are told, is equal to 16y plus 5. 16y plus 5. Let's see what we can do. The very first, first thing we need to do is to open this parenthesis. In other words, in other words, distribute this 3. 3 times 4, 3 times 4 is 12, so we get 12y. And again, 3 times negative 1. We have a negative here, three, this 3 is positive, so 3 times negative 1 is going to give us negative 3 equals 16y plus 5. Now listen carefully. The next thing we have to do is to bring all the to bring all the unknown on one side and bring all the known quantities on the other side. And typically, conventionally, uh, one brings the unknown quantity on the right hand side, uh, on the left hand side rather, and we have the known quantities on the right hand side, which is what, we, what is exactly what we're going to do here, which means somehow we have to bring the 16y to this side and we do so by subtracting 16y from both sides. So this is a positive 16y, this is a negative 16y, when we add the two figures, they will cancel each other out, and since we are subtracting 16y from this side, we must do the same thing on this side. So this is a positive 12, and we subtract 16y from it. Now we have to bring the 3 to that side, and we do so again by adding 3 to both sides. By adding 3 to both sides of the equation, that is. So here we have positive 12 and a negative 16. A positive 12 and a negative 16 is going to give us negative 4. So we get negative 4y equals, because this negative 3 and positive 3, they're going to cancel each other out. That was the whole point. And again, we have positive 16y and a negative 16y, and they're going to cancel each other out. And we end up here with, what we end up here is 6 plus, uh, 5 plus 3, which is 8. We're not interested in, in negative 4y. We want y by itself. So let's divide both sides by negative 4 divide both sides by negative 4 and again this negative 4 will cancel out this negative 4 we are left with y by itself and what we have is 8 over negative 4 8 divided, this is a positive 8 positive 8 divided by negative 4 is going to give us negative 2 and that's our y our y equals negative 2 that's it we're done y equals to negative 2 the last thing we should do if the time allows in the exam, if you have the extra few seconds, if the time allows, you should actually take a few seconds to check your answer, make sure it's correct, which is what we're going to do. We're going to put this value back in this thing and see if, if, we get, if, if, if this value of y satisfies that equation. That's how we say it. This value of y has to satisfy this equation. So we found out just now that y equals negative 2. We're going to put it in here and see if the equation is satisfied. So we have 3, 3 times 4y. 4 times negative 2 minus 1. Now I'm going to put this different kind of bracket so it's easier to see. So that's the first side. 3 times y, uh, sorry, 4 times y here. 4 times y, y is negative 2. 4 times y minus 1. And the whole thing is being multiplied by 3. And this quantity has to equal this side, which is 16 times y. 16 times y, which we, are, which we are claiming to be negative 2, we are making a claim, and once it's verified, then we will know that our claim is correct. Right? Plus 5. 
So once it's verified, we will know that we were uh, our claim is justified. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, negative 8 and a negative 1 is going to give us negative 9. So here we get 3 times negative 9 and here we get 16 times negative 2 which is negative 32, negative 32 and a positive 5. But well, what do you suppose negative 32 and a positive 5 is going to give us? Negative 32 and a positive 5 gives us negative 27 and 3 times negative 9 is also going to give us negative 27. There you go. It works. It works. That is, that is in fact the correct value of the unknown, the negative 2, x equals negative 2, or rather y, so the variable that we're dealing with, the name of that variable is not x, it is y. It is just a name, it doesn't matter what you call the variable, the unknown quantity, you can call it x, y, a, b, p, q, m, n, hippo, monkey, doesn't matter, it's just a name. Let's do the next one, just give me one second. Let's do problem number two. Problem number two. Problem number two again is a linear equation. It's a linear equation because x is raised to first power. It says x over 10 equals 5 over 12. And this is problem number two. Again, we want to get the x by itself. The quickest and the simplest, the most efficient way to get the x by itself is to multiply both sides by 10 so that we can cancel out this thing. That's exactly what we're going to do. Multiply both sides by 10. Both sides of the equation by 10. And this 10 will cancel out and we'll have the x by itself. Here we have a 10, here we have a 12. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. If we divide top and bottom by 2, we end up with 5 and here we end up with 6. And we have 5 times 5, so we end up with 25 over 6. 25 over 6 is the same as 24 over 6 plus 1 over 6. 24 over 6 is 4, so it's 4 and 1 6. We find that our x, x turns out to be 4 and 1 6. And as always, we must verify. We must verify, make sure this, this, this answer is correct, which is what we're going to do here at the bottom. So let's verify, shall we? Remember, on this side we had and this side we had x over 10, that's what we had, x over 10, and that x over 10, they told us, equals 5 over 12. So this is what we have to confirm, does x over 10 equal 5 over 12? Let's find out, shall we? x we, x we are claiming is 25 over 6. We're going to put this value, we're going to put the value of x in this form, not in mixed fraction, because mixed fraction, if we did it, we're going to have to spend the time to bring it back to that. So let's put it there, 25 over 6 over 10. Now 10 of course is a fraction. Did you know that? 10, any number, any number can be written as a fraction. 10 can be written as 10 over 1. So 10 over 1 is 10. So that's what this is. And how do we divide, how do we divide one fraction by another fraction? Well, we learned it long time ago when we were doing our fractions that in order to divide top fraction by the bottom fraction, we multiply the top fraction by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. So let's do it here. We take our top fraction, 25 over 6, and we multiply it by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. The bottom fraction is 10 over 1. 10 over 1 is going to become 1 over 10. So let's see what this gives us, shall we? Let's divide top and bottom by 5. We see 25 here, we see a 10 here. Let's divide top and bottom by 5, shall we? So five, 25 has 5, 5, and 10 has 2, 5. So 2 times 6 is what we end up at the bottom. And on the top, we end up with 5 times 1. 5 times 1 is just 5. And 6 times 2 is 12, which is exactly what the other side was supposed to be. The other side equals 5 over 12. We just found it. It, it, does, it does confirm. So it works. That's the right answer. 4 and 1 6 is, x equals 4 and 1 6 is in this, in this equation. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.